My name is Mike, and you're watching Polymath Unlimited. A little while ago, I released a short video showcasing the operation of an 8-bit computer processor that I've been designing. In this video series, I will be going through the design of that processor step by step by rebuilding it from the ground up. And who knows? Maybe we'll even make some improvements along the way. Let's begin by briefly outlining some goals for this project. First, the design should be simple enough to make a physical build practical. This means keeping our gate count low, preferably less than 1,000 gates. To help us achieve this goal, we will be building this computer entirely in one circuit in Logisim, no sub-circuits. If the design starts to become too big or begins to lag too much, then we will need to simplify. Second, the design should be powerful enough to perform fairly complex computing operations. This means we want our computer to do more than just basic addition and subtraction. We will need to design our computer with direct hardware support for other logical operations. We will also be adding hardware support for stack operations, which will make subroutines much easier to implement. Third, the processor should be easy to program. We will do this by making a custom assembler at the end of the project. This will allow us to write assembly programs for the processor to run. Eventually, I would like to be able to make a higher level language to write programs in, maybe even a C compiler, who knows. Unfortunately, I have a zero experience writing compilers, so I can't promise anything, but I'll keep that as an option for the future. Before we start building the processor itself, we should briefly go over Boolean logic. In computers, data is carried on wires, and depending on the voltage in a particular wire, we can interpret that wire as carrying either a 1 or a 0, a Boolean value. In order to do something useful with this Boolean value, we feed that value as input into a logic gate, which is simply a device that takes one or more Boolean values as input and gives a single Boolean value as output. The output of a logic gate depends on the values of all of its inputs. For example, a two-input AND gate would output a value of 1 only if both its first and second input are 1. Similarly, an OR gate would output a 1 if either its first or second input are 1. To simulate logic gates, we will use Logisim, which is a fairly powerful open source logic simulator. If I open up Logisim, we can see that there is a gates menu off to the left, under which we can find a variety of different logic gates to choose from. We see the AND and OR gates mentioned previously, as well as NAND and NOR gates, which are simply inversions of AND and OR gates. We also have XOR gates which stands for exclusive OR, which output one if only one, but not both of its inputs are one, and XNOR gates, which are inverted XOR gates. If we want to use these gates in our circuit, we simply drag and drop them onto the screen. We can then connect them through wires to inputs, outputs, and even other logic gates. Using these simple building blocks, it is possible to construct circuits that do any task we want. Logic gates have some very interesting and useful properties that we can use when building our circuits. For example, watch what happens when I invert the inputs and outputs of an AND gate. It turns the AND gate into an OR gate. The same thing happens when I invert the inputs and outputs of an OR gate. It turns it into an AND gate. We can also change an XOR gate into an XNOR gate and vice versa by inverting one of its inputs. These facts are useful to keep in mind when trying to simplify the logic of a circuit. We will see in some future videos that for certain circuits, we can build equivalent circuits with simpler logic by converting gates from one type to another using these inversion techniques. Now that we know the basics of how to use logic gates in our circuits, we can start building more complex circuits that perform more useful tasks like arithmetic, decision making, and even data storage. For now, logic gates are just sort of a black box that we can use, but don't really understand how they work under the hood. In the next video, we'll go over some techniques of how to construct logic gates out of transistors so we can eventually build a physical version of our computer once the design phase is finished. Until then, feel free to play around in Logisim and see what you can come up with. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.